Hello and welcome or welcome back to my dandelion diaries. Today I want to do more of a chatty video um, because in July I am going to challenge myself to do only one book, otherwise known as One Book July. So my plan is for July I will only be using this common planner, which is my A5 Sterling Ink common planner that's already becoming a chunky monkey. Um, so my plan is I'm going to take information from these books, Gratitude, Health, Garden, and Astrology, and kind of morph all of this into this. Now, I, I don't know exactly if I really want to do all of this because this is a lot of information that I try to keep up with every day and put it into this. But I do want to challenge myself because I think in 2025, I really want to be more minimal in a way. Like, I really want to challenge myself to only use one planner or two at max because I think that in the consumeristic side of things, like, having one planner is really all you should need. But I do like tracking multiple things. So I, I just want to see if it's even possible for me. I've tried this before and I get very overwhelmed and just kind of break out into multiple books again. So we're going to try it for a month in July, see how I feel, because this will help me better in 2025 with kind of my intentions for that. And yes, I realize we are in June and I'm talking about 2025 planners, but tis the season, okay? Just tis the season. Anyways, my main thing with this is in my weeklies in my common planner i have been doing a dashboard style layout which i've talked about in several videos at this point where i have different sections versus using it in more of an hourly style layout um, like scheduling my day i'm using this as kind of what i'm tracking in these other books on a day-to-day -day basis so my events up here is kind of secluded to this planner itself where it's you know what I have going on appointments um, dates whatever and then for my workouts this is something that I'm pulling from my health planner so with my health planner on a weekly basis I write down what my workout is that's a terrible example there's none on that page what my workout is um, on the sidebar here and in this book it's just the same thing in a different layout so I'm taking the same information I'm already writing in this and then putting it in here. So it's basically duplicate information. That's the way I see this. So after the workouts, I have meals. And this is the same thing where I'm taking the meals that I'm writing down in my health planner on a weekly basis right here. And I'm basically writing down here instead. So eliminating almost a whole page, I would say, out of this planner by just combining those two things at once onto a weekly dashboard view versus a scheduled weekly. And I really honestly like it a lot. Um, the only other things that I haven't really put into this from my health planner weekly view perspective is my fasting time tracker, my meal ideas, kind of my like little mental health section and then a weekly routine. But I am kind of pushing this in a different way in my common planner. So by eliminating this half of the page on the common planner, I have a personal section, which is kind of like a routine section from my health planner. Um, it's checking several of the same things. And then for my mental health, I have a little section where I'm writing down like my happy moment or um, my rate my week section. So the sections are still kind of there. They're just not as detailed as in this book, since obviously I'm trying to limit my space to encompass more things. So I think if I can figure out a way in my weekly dashboard view, which I really do think this is possible, to add in my fasting time tracker and then even a meal idea section, I will be 1000% golden on my health planner and just kind of getting rid of the weekly view on this. I will say with my health planner, the only things I don't think I can copy over are my monthly mood sections. Um, so I don't... I don't think I will stop this for the month of July. I still want to continue that in this planner, but for the weeklies, I'm going to try to incorporate everything from this into the big book instead. So 
not totally giving up on this one just because I, I have other plans for the monthly in my, um, in the big book. Anyways, the only other sections in this book that I really, okay, up to this book a lot actually. So like for the quarterly pages, I'm going to definitely be setting something like this up in the uh, July quarterly pages in the A5, which I'll make a whole separate video on how I'm basically going to set up the whole book for one month July or one book, one book July, geez. Um, and then in the back here is where my habit trackers are. So this is the only other thing I don't know if I'm going to be able to transfer into this big book. So the problem with this is I need a pretty good chunk of space to incorporate all of this information and the pages that I have left in the back of this book are limited. So I have I think 150 or 170. I don't remember. I just counted and I already don't remember the number. Anyways, I have a certain number of pages in the back left and I want to still have a day per page for the rest of the year. And then whatever remaining pages I have, I kind of want to set up what I have in the back pages here being my habit trackers, my workout logs, um, my running logs, and uh, my media logs and stuff like that. So running and there's media. So I don't know if I'll have space enough in the back of the common planner to do it now and have still one day per page as a daily. So don't know about that, but I will probably continue to update that in this book. So one book July, I guess, is primarily going to be weeklies for health planner, like pulling stuff from the weeklies in my health planner into this book, because I think that is the only space that I can truly eliminate for now. If I had set up this big book in the beginning of the year to have everything in this little book too, I might be able to pull it off, but I wouldn't have enough space for all of the dailies, at least because this book doesn't have enough pages for that, which is interesting because it's like a massive book. Anyways, um, all of that being said, that is what my plan is to kind of move out of this book into this book only. So that eliminates one book kind of. I would say for July, I will likely be updating both of these, um, at least in the health planner, all of the trackers and stuff, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to transfer all of that into this book. But the intention is there and that's, that's what matters. <laughs> Okay, so then for my gratitude journal, this is something that I really enjoy updating. I basically write down a little blurb every day of what I'm grateful for. I've been consistent with this almost every single day. Um, I, I love looking back at this little book. But I think I could totally eliminate the need for a whole separate book of gratitude by going into the monthly sections in this planner. So instead of writing down a synopsis of my day, I could easily write down one thing that I am grateful for. So that's my plan for July to kind of not use this little guy and instead just write down what I'm grateful for in the monthly section. I don't really use my monthly section very, I guess, particularly. I, I do like the general planning of like birthdays, appointments, um, any kind of holidays, things like that. But other than that, I don't, I don't like how blank it looks. Um, so like at the beginning of the year, let me just go here for a second. At the beginning of the year in January, this is what my spread looked like. It had birthdays, uh, the moon phase stuff and um, astrology information, like the big dates and then holidays. And that was it. And this looks super, super plain to me. And I just don't really vibe with that. So I tried it, you know, again for a few months and I just kind of got tired of it being so plain. So in April, I ended up adding in a highlight of my day or like a little brief synopsis of what I did that day. And I absolutely loved it because I could easily glance at this page and see, okay, wow, I did all of these things this month and it's all on one page. And it's really cool to look back on in like a memory kind of way, but I'm still keeping track of like the important dates, birthdays, all that kind of good stuff. So my plan is for July to kind of continue that, but instead of doing the highlight of the day or like the, a brief synopsis of the day to do the gratitude. And that way I can set this book to the side and that eliminates another one from the stack. Also in the monthly, I plan on doing more of a, um, 
I guess, garden journal situation. So my garden journal monthlies are kind of where I plan a lot of my like tasks, um, like monthly tasks. And there's not that many of them. This is obviously very blank right now. I'm just patiently waiting for everything to finish producing. My tomatoes are almost done and then I can harvest and start preserving. But um, anyways, all of that being said, my monthlies in my garden planner are probably where most of my planning happens just because of when I plant stuff, stuff gets ready to be harvested, whatever. So my plan is on top of the gratitude in the monthlies, I'm going to include the kind of major tasks from the garden planner as well. So these pages are likely going to look very full in July, but I really want to see if I can even do this because if I can, then I can possibly eliminate the garden planner which is something that I have been struggling with the past couple of months if I'm being honest also moving back to the weekly section I have been creating a little section down here for my garden and home situation so in the weeklies in my garden planner I basically have a task list of what I'm doing on the daily basis um general synopsis and then a master list for the week and then I try to count how many eggs my chickens are producing the weather and then a brief little note section so I can make my journal entries in the back so one thing that I don't think I will be able to combine from this book into my big book is the journal entries just because this does take a little bit more space but since it is kind of slow in the garden I have debated on creating a weekly section on the weekly page so like in addition to the little master list I have here and then kind of a routine tracker with an egg counter I've debated on having another little section next to it of like a brief synopsis of what's going on but at the same time I also think I could easily put that in the back pages if I have enough pages to do what I want with the health planner stuff all that being said, I think I could easily pull the information from my garden planner on a weekly basis over here again. So eliminating weeklies out of my garden planner and just putting it straight into the big book. So kind of eliminating two books worth of weeklies in July. That's that's kind of the goal with that. The only other thing with my garden planner is I track the weather in here and I do this in a quarterly style because that's the way the common planner is set up. So I basically have everything kind of listed out by a key and the temperature that happened. And then also in the year to glance section, this is where I keep track of the precipitation. So when it rains, I don't think I can transfer over the precipitation like this at a year to glance, but I am hoping hoping <laughs> that in the quarterly pages of the common planner, since they are pretty well laid out, I can do something similar to what I've done already for the second quarter and do um, kind of like cut this section in half. So like the first section would be more for like garden planner things, weather, precipitation, and then the second half would be stuff from my health planner being like things in the habit trackers in the back. It's just going to be a very, very condensed version. The only thing I don't think I can really transfer over is the um, like harvesting planting from the quarterly pages. So I know I just kind of flipped through this really quickly, but on the left side of the page here, I like to keep track of what I've planted and what I've harvested. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep track of that in this section if I'm still going to be doing a review and intentions for each month. And I honestly prefer to have the review and intentions for each month and then on the harvesting thing, just put it back into this planner. Again, this is probably not going to be a perfect one book July uh, just because there is so much information that I really like to keep track of, uh, but I'm going to challenge myself. Like that's what this is for me. It is a challenge. And lastly is my newest addition to my lineup that I've talked about, I think maybe once, maybe twice. Um, and this is the take a note planner that I have set up as my astrology study kind of journal situation. And I, I don't know how I feel about taking stuff from this and putting it into the big book, but if I were to do it, this is, this would be my plan. So the monthly section that I created in this book is basically an overview of all of the different aspects and transits of the planets and stars and what zodiac signs they go into and all of that kind of stuff. 
I don't think I could add this to the monthly section into the common planner without it just being utterly insanely full of information and just so busy that I wouldn't be able to pay attention. So I don't think I'm going to be doing this for July into the common planner. I think that would just be way too much. So I likely will just do that information in here and then transfer over the weeklies but into a daily format. So <sighs> this is the best way I can I, again can describe this so the weeklies in the take a note that I have set up here is basically all of the different aspects are um, laid out so I pre plan in a way all of the different aspects and transits that are major uh, degree points on those days in this book and then before the day occurs or the week in advance or whatever when I have time I go through and I basically write down my notes of each one of those transits, what they mean, the energies, how it may affect me and my personal charts, anything like that. So I, I think the only way I could combine this information is to put it into the daily pages into the common planner, which brings me to the daily pages in the common planner. So I'll just use this page as an example. So I have been doing my best to have one page per day and I like to keep track of my affirmations, prayers, and daily tasks and then have a brief little journal entry or synopsis. The only thing is I don't think I could combine the journal entry aspect on top of the astrology information because this takes up so much space. So this is part of my dilemma, I guess, with One Book July. I kind of want to just leave all of my astrology stuff in this book, and I don't want to take anything out of this and put it into this book. So I probably will end up doing just that. Like, I'll probably leave it to Two Book July, maybe, just because the level of detail that I want to be able to go into for all of these is... Like, I don't want to have to restrict myself on my note taking, if that makes sense, because this is something that I really enjoy learning and studying. And if I limit my space, then I'm going to feel limited on what I can write down or what I could learn from it. And I don't want to do that. So on second thought, I think I will just leave this book alone and I won't transfer anything out of the astrology book into the common planner. But still, I feel like this is a really good kind of balance. I'm getting rid of well, not getting rid of, but like combining three books or I guess four books into one book. And I really think this might work for July. And like I said, if I can get this to work for July, then I, I think I'd be golden in terms of like only using one, maybe two books in 2025. All this to kind of say that I'm not really trying to reduce my book count. I'm just challenging myself to see if I can do it. I still love having separate books for all areas because it just really makes sense in my brain. It's categorical. It just loves, like, I just love the separation of it, I guess. Um, I love being able to just, like, go into each pocket of my brain. Like, okay, in this bucket, we're pulling out all of my health data. Go. In this bucket, we're pulling out all of my garden data. Go. Like, it's not all mishy mashy in my brain. I like having it very separate. It just, it works very well for me. The last thing that I totally forgot about is my currently inked. So I have been using my little A6 Hobonichi, um, what is this called? Techo. And I've been doing my currently inked in here where I basically write down all of this and do big swatches. I think I could easily set this aside because I already do a swatch of all of the currently inked pens in my month on a header page in the back section. So <laughs> all of that being said as well, I think I would be okay to get rid of, well, get rid of, not use this book again in July. So now we're down to, from five books to, wait, from six books to two books because I don't think I will be able to combine this. I'm still gonna play around with it and see if it's even an option, but I think there's just so much information that I want to put into this one that I would be so restrictive of myself um, if I really did try to put all of this with all of this into this. Wow, that was a lot of this. <laughs> 
Uh, anyways, I think I'm going to stop here. If you are doing One Book July, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to chat with you about it. Are you, which book are you using? Are you using a big book like an A5? Are you doing it in a week's B6? Um, what brand are you using? Are you using a Wonderland 222, Hobonichi, Sticking with Sterling Ink, uh, Paper Tests? I mean, there's so many different brands of planners out there now, especially the offer the Tomoe River paper, which I'm very excited about because it is just the best paper in my opinion. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to have a discussion with you in the comments about One Book July. Do you think it works? Do you think you already do it anyways because you use one book every day? Um, I just, I really love chatting about planner stuff, so let's just chat about it down in the comments. Anyways, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!